Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Harsham Ali Khan. Now in this video, I'm going to start the problems from 7th. Already 6 main problems and 7 short problems I have completed on valuation of shares. Before that, I have explained you about the meaning of the term shares, what is the need of calculating the value of share and what are the methods of calculating the value of the share. Apart from this, I have uploaded so many videos on different subjects like financial accounting, cost accounting, management accounting, corporate accounting, income tax, uh, business statistics, financial management, accounting for management, statistics for management, investment management. So many subjects videos I have already uploaded for BCom, BBA, MBA, CA, CMA etc. So if you are new on to my channel visit always the playlist have a glance on all the subjects which I have taken up and in each subject so many videos are there giving in-depth knowledge. So before starting the seventh problem I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given the link under my description always keep the problems ready. Uh, now take a screenshot of the points then I will explain. Now, see the seventh problem. Problem number seven I am reading out. On 31st December 1992, the balance sheet of a limited company reveals the following. Complete balance sheet is given share capital 40 lakh, reserves and surplus 11 lakh. No, long term borrowings 5%, debentures are there 10 lakh, current liability 14 lakh. So, this debentures and current liability are outside liabilities. And assets, fixed assets, tangible assets 50 lakh, intangible asset goodwill. 4 lakh and current assets are 21 lakh. Now notes are given share capital 4 lakh equity share of 10 inch and reserves reserves are 9 lakh PNR account lakh. that's it. Now adjustment on 31st December 1992 the fixed assets were independently valued at 35 lakh and goodwill 5 lakh. The present value of fixed assets and present value of goodwill is given. So we should not take the balance sheet value. We should take the current value. Then the net profit for the three years were 1990 5,10,000, 1991 5,30,000 and 1992 5,20,000 of which 20% was placed under reserve. In this problem balance sheet is given so we can calculate intrinsic value. Apart from the profits are given so we are required to find out the yield value. The first time I am going to explain you how to find out the yield value. So far we have applied only one topic that is intrinsic value. right? Profits are given for the last 5 years. We take the average profit. From the average profit 20% every year we are transferring to reserve. It is the policy of the company. So we will transfer 20% of that average profit to reserves. And this proportion being considered reasonable in the industry in which the company is engaged and their fair investment return may be taken at 10%. Fair return on investment, this is normal rate of return. So in our terminology, we call it as NRR, normal rate of return. Compute the value of company's share by net assets method and earning capacity method. Earning capacity method is nothing but a yield method. Right? Sometimes they call it as earning capacity, sometimes yield method means same. So first time in a single problem we are going to solve by intrinsic and also by yield. Now see here, calculating, first of all calculating the intrinsic value. Take the assets, goodwill, present value is given in the adjustment, 5 lakh. Fixed asset, again in the adjustment it is given the present value of fixed asset, 35 lakh. We are not taking the balance sheet value. Huh, current assets, current assets balance sheet value is given. That only we are taking because current value is not given. Balance sheet value is given. So we are taking balance sheet. Total of the assets 61 lakh. From this outside liability, two outside liabilities are there 5% debentures and sundry creators. Current liability. Take the total 24 lakh. Subtract we get 37 lakh. Now we deduct the preference share capital but we don't have preference share capital in the problem. Then 37 lakh is the 
amount available for equity shareholders or net assets. Now we can simply substitute the formula intrinsic value of equity shares is equal to amount available divided by number of equity shares. In the problem number of equity shares are given 4 lakh. You can see number of shares 4 lakh. So 37 lakh divided by 4 lakh 9.25. This is the intrinsic value of equity share. For half of the problem completed. Now remaining half is calculating the yield value or earning capacity method. So calculating the value of equity share by earning capacity method, average profit. Last three years profits are given 5 lakh 10,000, 5 lakh 30,000, 5 lakh 20,000. So we'll take the average profit. The average profit, if you add up this 3 divided by 3, you'll get 5 lakh 20. This is the average profit. From average profit, let's transfer to reserve. It is given in the problem. It is the policy of the company and all the company in the same industry. There's this, uh, I mean, policy of transferring 20% of profit to reserve. So 20% of 5 lakh 20,000, 1 lakh 4,000, subtract 4 lakh 16,000. This is the profit available for equity shareholders, right? Now, first of all, we need ERR, expected rate of return we have to find out. So ERR formula profit available divided by equity share capital. In the problem, equity share capital is given 40 lakhs. See the problem, equity share capital 40 lakhs. So 4 lakh 16,000 by 40 lakh into 100, 10.4%. This is the ERR, expected rate of return. Now the formula to calculate yield value or value of share according to earning capacity method is ERR by NRR into paid up value per share. So expected return we got 10.4. Normal rate of return that is given in the problem, 10%. And into paid up value per share in the problem paid up value per share is 10 rupees. So this 10, this 10 will get cancelled and for ultimately 10.4 is the yield value. So intrinsic value we got 9.25 and yield value we got 10.4. That's all. So in single problem, we have calculated both values. Now next eighth problem. <coughs> The following is the balance sheet of MSSH Desai and Company Private Limited as on 31st December. Share capital 1 lakh, reserves and surplus 80,000. 80, Trade payable 40,000, short term provision 40,000. Now asset side tangible assets 1 lakh 40,000, intangible assets trademark 20,000. Non, uh, other non current asset preliminary expenses 7,000. Ignore preliminary expenses. Current assets are inventories, uh, trade receivable, cash and bank balance. Uh, cash and cash equal 25,000. Total of the balance sheet is 2,60,000. So the total of the balance sheet is 2,60,000. Now notes. Share capital 10,000 equity shares of 10 each 1 lakh. Reserves and surplus general reserve is given PNL account. Short term provisions. Provision for taxation and workmen saving account. Both are outside liabilities. So we should take under outside liability these two items also. Provision for taxation and workmen saving account. Tangible assets, land and building 70,000, plan and machinery 70,000. Now, notes are over. Now, additional information. The plant and machinery is worth 60,000 and land and buildings are worth 1,30,000 as valued by an independent valuer. So, when present values are given, we should not take the balance sheet value. The present value, plant and machinery will take 60,000, land and building 130. 5,000 of the data is to be taken as bad. That means debtors. From debtors, we subtract 5,000 because it is the bad debts, irrecoverable debt. The profit of the company are 1986, 50,000, 87, 70,000, 88, 60,000. So you can see profits are fluctuating. So we take the simple average. It is the practice of the company to transfer 20% of profit to reserve. Ignoring taxation, find out the value of the share of the company on their intrinsic basis as also on the yield basis. Just like the previous problem, we have to find out the intrinsic value as well as the yield value. Shares of similar companies quoted in the stock exchange yield 12% on their market value. This is the NRR. Goodwill of the company may be taken at 1 lakh. That's all. 
these are the values we have to take so again we have to calculate the intrinsic value and yield value first of all we'll calculate the intrinsic value assets land and building 1 lakh 30 thousand given in the adjustment present value and goodwill last line it is given the value of the goodwill 1 lakh and plant and mushroom 60 thousand these values are given in the adjustment where are other values adjustments are not given so we'll take the balance sheet value so in the balance sheet, it is given trademarks 20,000, stock 20,000, debtors. Debtors are given 48,000 in the balance sheet, but adjustment says 5,000 rupees are bad debts. That means out of 48,000, we are not going to receive 5,000. So deduct 5,000. So 43,000. Bank balance 25,000 as usual. Then take the total 3,98,000. Outside liabilities are taxation reserve workmen saving account sundry creditors just now i told you short term provisions are given that consist of taxation provision for taxation and workmen saving account outside liabilities subtract for 80000 remaining 318000 from this we have to subtract preference share capital but in our problem there is no preference share capital so 318000 is the amount available for equity shares the formula for intrinsic value, amount available divided by number of equity shares, amount available 318,000, number of shares 10,000, so 31.80 is the intrinsic value, that's all. Now we have to find out the yield value. For yield value, we need the profits. The profits are given, the profits for the three years are given 50,000 for 1986 and 70,000 for 1987 and 60,000 for 1988 but during the current year 1988 one revenue loss is there that revenue loss is the bad debts 5,000 rupees we are unable we, we cannot be able to recover from the debtors that's the revenue loss the current year's profit 60,000 we deduct 5,000 bad debts from 60,000 so ultimately the correct profit of 1988 will be 55,000 not 60,000 so after converting that 60,000 into 55,000 then we calculate the average profit calculating yield value profit of 1988 60,000 from this revenue loss that is bad debts we deduct so 55,000 is the correct profit for 1988 average profit simple average the so 50,000, 70,000, 55,000 divided by 3, 58,333.33 this is the average profit. From the average profit transfer, 20% transfer to reserve. So 58,333.33 into 20%, 11,666.67. Deduct 46,666.66. This is the profit available for equity shareholders. Now first we need ERR expected rate of return the formula is profit available divided by equity share capital into 100 every video i tell you that you have to maintain running notes always write down the important formulas whenever whenever i explain you write down er expected rate of return profit available divided by equity share capital into 100 so 46,666.66 divided by 1 lakh into 100. 46.67 is the ERR, expected rate of return. Now, yield value per share, expected rate of return divided by normal rate of return into paid up value per share. Expected rate of return 46.67. Normal rate of return is given in the last paragraph 12%. Then paid up value per share is 10 so ultimately 38.89 this is the yield value of share that's it so this is the eighth problem completed now ninth problem is on march 31st 2005 the balance sheet of a limited company disclosed the following share capital 4 lakh reserves and surplus 1 lakh 10 thousand long term borrowings debentures 5 percent debentures 1 lakh current liability 1 lakh 30 thousand total of the liability side 7 lakh 40 thousand now assets Tangible assets 5 lakh, intangible asset 40,000, current assets 2 lakh. Then share capital consists of 40,000 equity share of carriage 4 lakh. Then reserves and surplus are given. 
On March 31st, 2005, the fixed assets were independently valued at 3,50,000 and goodwill 50,000. So we are not going to take the book value of fixed assets and goodwill. We are taking the present value, current value. Then the net profit for the three years are 2003, 51,600, 2004, 52,000 and 2005, 51,650. Profits are fluctuating. So we take the simple average and 20% was placed to reserve as usual in every problem it is giving the same. That means don't make it a rule that every company will transfer 20% only. In real practice it may depend on the company but for our problem sake it is given that profit 20% of profit should be transferred to reserve. This proportion being considered reasonable in the industry in which the company is engaged and where a fair investment return may be taken at 10% NRR 10%. Compute the value of company share by net assets method and the yield basis. Exactly similar to the previous one. Now, first of all, intrinsic value. Assets, fixed assets, 3,50,000 is the current value, not the book value. Then current assets are 2 lakh, then goodwill 50,000. Total of the assets, 6 lakh. Outside liabilities are 2, 5% debentures 1 lakh, current liability 1 lakh 30, 2 lakh 30,000. There is no preference share capital. If there is preference share capital, we would have deducted, but we don't have. So this 3,70,000 is the amount available for equity shareholders. Now we calculate intrinsic value. Amount available divided by number of equity shares. The so amount available 3,70,000. Number of shares are given in the problem 40,000 equity shares. The so 9.25 is the intrinsic value. Now we have to calculate the yield value, average profit, take simple average, add up all the three profit divided by three, you will get 51,750, average profit 51,750 minus 20% transfer to reserve, 10,350 is transferred to reserve, remaining profit is the profit available for equity shareholders, so 41,400 is the profit available for equity shareholders. Now, before calculating yield value, we need ERR, expected rate of return. So ERR is equal to profit available divided by equity share capital into 100. The profit available 41,400. Equity share capital is given in the problem 4 lakhs into 100. So 10.35 is the ERR, expected rate of return. Now yield value per equity share. ERR divided by NRR, expected rate of return divided by normal rate of return into paid up value per share. So here ERR 10.35, NRR is given in the problem 10%, whereas paid up value per share is 10 rupees, right? This 10, this 10 will cancel, then 10.35 is the yield value of equity share, that's all. So in this video, I have completed 7th, 8th and 9th. Three problems I have completed. So almost every problem, the contents are same, except one or two new points you will come across. So focus on those new points. So comparatively, this chapter is very, very easy to understand, provided you must have the interest to learn. Then only. If you want shortcut method, you will not be able to get the command. So always suggest... Uh, whatever I suggest, follow those instructions. Definitely you will get a lot of knowledge, a lot of command, a lot of confidence on the subject. So inshallah, we'll continue the next problem in the next video. So if you are satisfied, give a like to the video, share my channel, give your comments, subscribe if you have not yet subscribed and buy the super thanks, which is given below my video. Inshallah, we'll continue the next problem in the next video.